Hello and welcome to the United MEC Leading Edge podcast. Today we introduce a new series called Piloting Your Mind. I'm the United MEC spokesman, Captain James Belton. Today's episode will focus on mental resilience and mindfulness. We are here with our SOAR PSP chairman, Captain Lynn Tatum, and Sean Handlovich from United's Human Factors and Pilot Development Team. Lynn, you and Sean have paired up to bring us a new series. Can you tell us what you think it's, uh, what's important about this series and describe what's in store? Thanks, Jim. Most of our pilots are now familiar with the SOAR program and the help the volunteers are striving to give the pilots. But these are some challenging times for everyone in our airline industry. Pilots especially are experiencing a multitude of stressors. We're worried about our mentally focused ability and how it affects our profession and personal lives. It's being put to a test. For the most part, pilots are naturally resilient. It kind of comes with our job. But when we're too overloaded or out of our norm, we struggle just like everyone else. There's been a lot of talk out there on websites, chat sites about mindfulness and the benefits of bettering our resiliency during this recovery. Since our human factors department at the training center is what I believe an industry leading program on resiliency, it just seemed prudent to work with them and pair up to give pilots some skills and techniques that will help them take care of themselves, their families, and uh, ensure the safety of our profession. Lynn, this sounds uh, very interesting and somewhat unique. Sean, can you introduce yourself and describe your involvement in the program and bring us up to speed on mental resilience? Sure. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. I've been working with the Flight Ops Group for almost five years now. And prior to coming to United, I had a, I've, I started a mindfulness-based coaching practice working with other professionals who were in high-risk industries, such as your first responders, law enforcement, and medical personnel, as well as working with athletes. And then I worked with individuals who struggled with anxiety and depression and creating um, well-being home programs. And now I also get to work with our professionals here at United. I collaborate with specialists from Human Factors, um, specialists in adult learning and professional development training. This team that I work with is comprised of both M&A employees as well as our United Pilots who are instructor evaluators and LCAs. These individuals who operate at their highest level in their respective fleets. We work collectively to explore the most leading edge concepts out there to develop curriculums that ensure our pilots have the tools necessary technically, skillfully, mentally, and emotionally to maintain that healthy work-life balance. At the Flight Training Center, our resilient training is designed to provide just those tools the tools to develop highest level of self and situation awareness. This deliberate mindset, this is how we optimize our knowledge recall, to recall the already existing skills and training that we have already taken part of and that is now required for us to be in peak performance in this critical moment. So you're saying that uh, mental resilience is not just inherent, as Lynn mentioned earlier. It can be trained. So how is it trained, and how do you propose that this will help pilots in their personal lives? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, mental resilience is something that we're all born with and is an inher inherent. However, when we learn to be deliberate and intentional about our resilience, that's when we can strengthen our ability to control our self and situation awareness, um, as well as strengthening that ability to bounce back. So by the technical terms of resilience, it's our ability to bounce back, recover, and adapt in the midst of those unwanted situations or events. Now, obviously we can see the benefits in this for our pilot training environment, 
but everyone can benefit from using these mindfulness skills to cope with stresses and problems that this crisis brings or any crisis brings. Stressful and unwanted events are relative and they are unique to the varying event as well as the individual themselves. Now the COVID pandemic, this has been a change globally. The world of uncertainty can be both or can be physically, mentally, and emotionally difficult. And this is why right now I feel that this is so important to learn these new skills for everyone to be able to enhance their ability to cope with the current situation that's in front of us, but then also those future uncertainties. Mental resilience, this is a conscious awareness we're talking about. And to control how we respond to this moment and how we will control the next moment. Jim, it's all very intentional. I understand. And I know a lot of people are not dealing very well with the COVID-related mandatory isolation that we're all under. I would imagine you have uh, some pretty good advice here. Well, I try to have some good advice here, um, but let's compare this to something that uh, we can all relate to. Um, Jim, have you ever had a sports injury? Sure. I was a, uh, I was a frequent flyer at the uh, orthopedic doctor. Most recently, I broke my leg in two places. That's when I don't have my foot in my mouth, though. Well, there you go. Then you understand exactly what it means to be laid up, right? And that you are limited on what you can and can't do and participate in. Now, obviously, this is good for the physical being of who you are to allow that recovery that needs to happen. But let's think about the emotional and mental stress that laying around can do, especially for somebody who's active. Being at home, laying around, this creates boredom, and boredom leads to depression. And this is where we're in this thought funk of getting frustrated with what we're seeing as being the negative of the event. But we can choose to see it differently. We can alter our perspective. Just noticing our thoughts is the first step. Noticing the negative language maybe that your inner dialogue is having. Being aware of the inner dialogue, what is a story and has emotion versus what are the facts. Just like the current situation, things are improving, restrictions are lifting, but we still have challenges. So Jim, as you were able to get up and move around with your broken leg, you still had limitations. New changes come, old changes are familiar, but it is not easy and it is possible to change our perspective in the given moment. The hard thing is there's a level of surrendering that happens when we allow something, allowing change. We have to give up an element of control. And in a moment of crisis, taking control of just one thing, the one powerful thing, which is ourselves. Taking control of ourselves. We learn to adapt, we learn to accept what is, we learn to recognize our thoughts, and all of this being more adaptable is what makes it easier, the crisis itself, to feel easier. You're going to experience moments of clarity with this mindfulness-based practice. You're going to notice those stories and you're going to be able to have better focus. Every event, like I said, is unique, just like you are. But when it comes to being present in this just one moment, being here is all that matters. The previous and the future events don't matter yet. Being present to this one moment is the only place you have to have your focus. And since most of us have never been through a mandatory isolation before, being resilient means simple things like creating new, um, new routines. As I mentioned, being aware of your thoughts, setting intentional goals, small goals, and achieving one simple goal at a time. Doing things that you enjoy. I make lists of things that I enjoy, music, people, things, so that when I start recognizing that I'm getting in a funk, then I can go to my list and find things that I really enjoy doing. 
going back to the pilot training environment, pilot aircraft handling skills are not enough anymore. A pilot's ability to regain focus, control their emotional response to this startle and unwanted event requires a deliberate intentional awareness and focus back to the moment. That's mindfulness practice. Outside of the training environment, we now have these unwanted events and mandatory restrictions causing our focus in very unhealthy areas. Hey, Sean, I'd like to emphasize here, it's a perfect time, that before this crisis, pilots, well, basically everyone, has been experiencing normal tragedies and life events, and the life events. Um, it's hard. Life is hard. But now you add all the additional pressure from health concerns with COVID or our industry we don't know about, it pushes us beyond our normal coping skills. So that's kind of the point of this podcast is hoping that Sean and her team would pair up with other folks to share some skills to strengthen our overall resilience. This sounds like we can all benefit from this training, whether we are about to start a recall training event or struggling at home. Sean, what are the specifics uh, in terms of skills and behaviors that pilots can learn, both to improve our personal and professional performance, as Lynn mentioned? Yeah. So high-risk industries like um, aviation naturally draw high performers, and high performers have a common characteristic um, besides their egos, um, and that is the adaptability to choose one thought over another in a moment. So this is recognizing a thought in this moment. It is in that moment where high performance happens. We can talk about high performance, but the action of the performance is in this moment. The first mindfulness-based skill that we work on is that awareness to those controlled and uncontrolled thoughts. This is known as metacognition, which is just a fancy word for paying very close attention to not just what you're thinking, but how you're feeling while you're thinking. It's very aware of your thoughts. This high level of self-awareness, this skill is foundational to the ability to decide if this current, so, uh, current thought serves the outcome or not. Most of us are biased to believe that just because we think something is true, then therefore it must be true. Here is where we can really help ourselves become more resilient, and that is to become aware of those negative thoughts and the perspective of those thoughts. Asking yourself in those difficult moments, could this be worse? I'm sure we could find a way that it could be. Ask yourself if you've been through something like this or something worse before that you felt you couldn't adapt to. I'm sure you did adapt. And also to think about one positive thing in the moment. This one can be challenging, but maybe the weather was just really right that day. Maybe you got up out of the right side of the bed. Maybe you, you know, there's something you can find in that moment that may not relate to the event stressor, but something in that day that you could find that would be positive. I can see certainly how this would relate to what's going on at United Airlines right now. Um, can you share a little bit more on that? Yeah, so right now, Jim, for decades, let's just talk about you as pilots, you guys have been able to control your lifestyle. You get to fly where you want, you get to live where you want, you get to um, live these careers that you've all been so passionate about. But all of that may potentially change right now. The recent displacement may move you from one seat to another. It may move you to a different equipment, or you may be facing an entirely unwanted lifestyle change. But it's your perspective that is the only thing that you can control, and really that's what denotes how bad it is. Every unique situation has a unique feeling, and it's our perspective. Focusing on the facts 
going back to your leg injury, you could focus on the injustice of the fact that you couldn't get up or even the injustice of how the accident happened, but focusing on the facts that you're healing. What do you notice right now in this moment and accepting it as it is? This practice that we work on of becoming aware and getting intentionally focused, this is the, where the mind control works. So let me give you an example. One way you can practice this strengthening your intentional focus skill and to be able to get present, brushing your teeth. Brushing your teeth and noticing as you're brushing your teeth. So doctors recommend two hours or two minutes, sorry, two minutes of brushing our teeth. But in that two minutes of time, as you're brushing one tooth and moving to the next tooth, your thoughts are going to drift, naturally bouncing around. We have 35 to 48 thoughts per minute. Therefore, your thoughts are gonna drift. When that drifts, your intentions of practicing your focus is to bring yourself back to the food, back to the tooth you are last on, flossing the same thing. This practice of choosing what to focus on and holding your tension there as long as you can. We practice the same focus using our five senses. See, hear, smell, taste, touch, what you feel against your skin. Notice it, hold your attention there for a moment. Pick up your attention and move it to another one of your five senses. This is you saying what you want to focus on and this is you deciding to hold your focus there. It's a flexing of that gray matter muscle. Um, any other thoughts that come to mind during that process, Jim? This is just observing that thought, acknowledging it, not working it out, just simply allowing it, and then go back to brushing your teeth again. That's very interesting, uh, Sean. I hope to explore that more in detail a little bit later on. So what other tools do you have to increase mental resilience? Breath work. Breath work is foundational to the mind-body connection. There are different areas in the brain that are wired to the body um, and the breath controls that. It, it speaks back and forth of the anxiety. So we use a resting breath and this is a relaxed breath. So when we think about ourselves relaxed breathing, it's this deep, slow, controlled breath as you're laying there comfortably, allowing the pace to really become effortless. Pilots who practice this simple skill of awareness of their breath helps them to remain in a resilient zone, to be able to recover from the resilient situation or be resilient and stay resilient. Um, tracking the breath is a way to allow the body to be in concert with the mind and the emotions and enhances our, sel our self-awareness and the activities of the brain that again, regulate the arousal, the thinking effectively and restoring the sense of connection of, of others and ourself. And then we talk about tactical breathing and this is a paced control breath. We have an adaptation of paced breath, breath work that was actually developed by a military officer who this practice has been taught to groups such as combat soldiers, first responders, athletes, law enforcement. And the studies from the US Army indicate that tactical breathing can actually increase a um, short term and increase the long and short term recall of the actions that need to be um, taken during this event. So what we use in the classroom is a four count breath, if you can imagine a box. So we inhale for a count of four, and we expand that into the belly, and then we relax and hold that breath. So we're not clenching for it, we're just resting for a count of four before we slowly exhale for a count of four, and then again, letting that exhale rest for a count of four. We'll take the pilots through this one to five times throughout the three different sessions that they do. But this breath control, again, bringing your mind and body together. We suggest that individuals practice this a few minutes before walking into their briefing room into an important simulator event or a pushback during their regular operations. Again, just to bring them present to the moment. How can pilots uh, tell if they're gaining any benefit from this resilience training? We live in a uh, immediate satisfaction society. So is this immediate? How long does it take? Yeah. Um, pilots reported that when they applied the resilience skill, 
they found a greater sense of calm. Um, I had pilots talk about their sim events and that the breathing technique was recognized by their flight partner. And so they were able to control. They also noticed an overall self and situation awareness that they had to be able to control. And this is in their sim events shortly after training. Um, they were able to work from a, a capacity more confidently to deal with those unexpected events that nobody could have foreseen, but they were able to be calm in that moment. Um, those times that there's no checklist or standard operating procedures, that's, those are all um, automation management. We need the human part here to be able to make the decision of the thoughts, the awareness of self. Um, and we've had pilots that have shared the success of doing these things, as well as the overall health, lowering their blood pressure, being able to improve their sleep patterns whenever that may be, and their overall life. Resilient people adapt well and recover quickly after stress, adversity, and change. That's what we've been talking about, the ability to bounce back. People who are less likely to be resilient, they're more likely to dwell on problems, feeling that overwhelmment. Um, they use unhealthy coping techniques, numbing techniques to handle the stress. Um, they develop anxiety and depression. Like other skills though, Jim, the more we train, and this time we're training the brain, the more we train, the easier the skill is to master and benefit to follow. It's a matter of applying the skills. Sure, these things will come back when you want them to, you'll recall them, but not in the given moment. So part of training is to recognize the pitfalls as well, or the barriers of resilience. Understanding, the, understanding these will also help you move forward. The unproductive thoughts, and we've all seen these in people where they're fixed on the flaws, obsessing over what's wrong. They jump to conclusions without even hearing the possibilities of the options. They're overgeneralizing, applying the negative occurrence to their entire situation. The all or none thinking, that's a hopelessness, there's no ground of the middle catastrophizing, you know, the ones that like, this is just like the worst thing over and everything is the worst thing ever. Um, emotional logic. There's the emotional space of our storytelling and the facts. Hanging on to the emotional logic is false and has no, there's nothing to support it in the present moment. The should statements, this is saying that the world has to be a specific way in order to be proper. And then of course, those that blame and they're putting the responsibility on every external circumstances. They take no responsibility. No responsibility means no control. No matter how likely the thought is, its effectiveness is determined by our emotional response. We will go into greater depths on these in some of our future podcasts though. Sean, this is, uh, this is certainly very interesting stuff. Uh, no doubt useful qualities for our, all of our pilots on and off the flight deck. So thank you so much for being here with us. And as we reach the end of the podcast, I look forward to hearing uh, more about this subject in, in a lot more detail from, uh, from you folks. Lynn, what do you have in store for us for the next episode in the series? Well, Jim, we plan to create an uh, interesting series. We're going to have guest speakers um, from all over industries, our pilot industries and more. We're going to have some testimonies, and uh, a lot of this will touch topics of resilience and mindfulness. We're going to give specific mindful techniques as well and link resources to our podcast and our website. On the next podcast, we plan to bring in Rob Strickland, who will expound uh, more in depth on the resilience program at the training center and the benefits that our pilots get there. And Sean will parallel this to how we can incorporate it in our personal life. So that's what's coming next. Great, uh, Sean and Lynn, you did a super job talking about uh, resiliency and uh, how it can affect and benefit our pilots. Thank you for tuning in to the United MEC Leading Edge podcast, Piloting Your Mind series. On behalf of the United MEC and all of our ALPA volunteers, fly safe and stay healthy. I'm James Belton.